Hello and welcome to this Blender topic on node materials. We're using Blender 2.68 today and I'd li like to start out by uh, opening up the screencast keys. So if I forget to say something you can see, read it right there. I'll delete the cube and press 5 to get orthogonal view and the shift A to add a cylinder. I I'm going to use this as the object that receives the material. I'll first do something to make it look more like a cup and I select these two surfaces by shift on alt or just right clicking and shift alt shift right clicking and I delete the faces and then I shift to edge mode control tab and then right mouse and the alt and the s to scale this to make this looks like look like a cup and the cup needs a bottom so I'll press E for extrude, S for scale, and like that, E, S, and like that, and then E, S, and zero, enter, and Alt, M, at center. So now we have a cup. But I would like to have some thickness to it, so I'll uh, choose edge mode and right mouse click, Alt, right mouse click, and Shift, Alt, right mouse click, one to look at this from the front, and then S for scale and shift Z. No, sorry. I need to E for extrude and then scale shift Z. Like that, just a tiny bit. And then we'll use W and uh, bridge edge loops. And I'll just leave the bottom single like that I won't um, work anymore with that. Uh, and uh, we can check the normals to see if they're behaving nicely. And I think we need to select everything and do control N to have all the normals pointing outward. And I think that's good. Turn that off and uh, W and shade smooth. And I can render that. And then we can turn on uh, the subsurface, the subdivision surface modifier, and render that. And then you get some artifacts here. So I think the way to deal with that is to do this. You can do, do Control R, and uh, just put another edge down there, and the same on the on the outside here. and do the same thing on the inside. And just I'll just move I'm not depressing any mouse button just moving the mouse like this. And um, that looks good. Looks a little bit like a piece of pottery actually. Um, so now we have our object and then we can do shift D for duplication and duplicate it and then select both of them and uh, shift D for duplication and duplicate all of this and then we'll just select all of them and move them over like this and before I do anything else I just like to move my light over here to on, on this side and uh, shift A add another light and hem a hem hemispherical light this is not necessary but I just do it for, because it feels good to move that up and then energy 0 0.3 and uh, we can look at this through the camera and then right mouse click on the camera frame and G grab it move it down a little bit and then F12 so now we have these four cups and I think it would be reasonable to I press 7 and the shift A to add a mesh plane here and I S30, so scale that up real good, and then take it down there, so we're beneath that. And this is the first element I'll give an actual material. I press N to remove that, and just pull that out. And this just will just have a regular material. So I just press this to get a slot, and then new, and I call that floor. And I'll just change the, the color a little bit and uh, the hardness to 10. Like that. And we can look at that. 
So there we have something that the shadow can fall on and everything. Um, so let's start with uh, the materials for this, the, the subject of this actual topic. And the, the first thing you have, you always have to have a material slot and uh, I'll create a new material, I'll call that blue. And uh, it, since we're talking about node materials, I would like to use nodes, so I can click this here. And then we can see there's no actual, nothing happens in this material because I need to go to, I'll turn on the composting um, layout and there's a node editor and if I choose the materials icon not these two other ones but the materials icon then it shows that okay I have a material and an output but there's no selection here so I want to open that up and I can then choose this blue here and of course I haven't given it any any blue color it's just a, a naming and we can render that and see that it looks kind of like the other ones um, that have no materials. Uh, so I can change the color to of this here. If I want to change it here, I can do that. Or I can change it here. It's the same thing. You can see that it's changing over here same way. So now we have a blue material there, and you can see that that's reflected there. And so the only thing that you need to do is to, you know, activate use nodes, but you also have to have, and that's very important. You have to have something in this input field, otherwise, you know, get you will get nothing. So if I remove that, then you know that's what you have, nothing. So there you go. And then we'll do the same thing here. It's just a different color. Call it ag agua. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, I'm not sure. Like this. And I'll use nodes for the, this too and do the same thing here. So we have now we have two materials. One blue green and one that is blue and then we move over to this one here and then add a material slot and I'll call this what w h t w h a t what and I'll use nodes on it too and I'll do the same thing here and then I can I can start using the or I choose to use other materials as an input so I'll use this here uh, the um, the blue as the color input to that material so if I if I select this one then it's going to look blue here in the 3D display. If I select that one, it's going to look gray because this is the actual color that the Watt has. I'm just using another material as input. And now I'll press with my mouse cursor here, I'll press control up arrow to have this, you know, the entire screen makes it easier for us to see what's going on. And I'll use, I'll add an input, another material that I will use for its specularity. And that's, of course, the agua. And you can see there's a slight difference here between these two. And I press Control up arrow to go back to here and then we'll render that. And you can see that the these two, this is a blue cup also, but it has a different specularity. Um, and then uh, if I have this one selected here, that's important what you have selected because otherwise you're going to get confused if you have this selected here, then you're operating on you know the alpha aqua material here but I would like to you know change around this one here so let's say I change the hardness 
make it a lot softer. Takes a while for it to take. Then you get like a lot of this greenish is mixed in with the color. And and the um, and oh by the way, if you like by mistake have clicked somewhere here, like if you click near these, you don't have the click in them. If you click near them, then they you know check the box or uncheck the box. So if the specular is off, then you know all I'm doing here is not going to have any effect. But that's what I wanted. So if we just um, turn that on, then you can see that this specularity has now blended into this, uh, you know, greenish white has blended in a lot more into this color because I've ink, I've softened this one. If I take it down to one, then you get that. So that's as, as much of an effect that will have. And then in its turn, if I go to this material here, so now I'm changing the agua. Since I'm ch selecting this one, then I can change it here in these panels. And I can lower the hardness of it even you know as much as I can. And it has a white specularity, then that will you know be what you get, then it's almost washed out. Since this is the combination, this material here, the color that I'm giving the specularity is the combination, the shading model for this. You can also change, you know, change it to another shader model that's also that will also change, you know, what you get. So th that's how you press control up arrow that's how you you know route the different aspects of each material further you know in this this chain of nodes it's your inputs and your output so I'll go back here and uh, select that one because I would like to put that hardness uh, to 35 let's say and I can have it for now that's also changing it and then I'll select this one oh wait a minute select this one here and I can change the hardness to 10 and then you get this other material So you can see how you can you can change you can use you know this is just one of a myriad of possibilities that you can use node materials for but before we leave this uh, and we haven't dealt with textures at all just the materials just the shaders but before we leave this and this is really important you can you can have you can have mirror of course and that you activate that here too so in uh, okay that that wasn't the one Sorry, that's the one that I would like to have mirror on. So I'm controlling the mirror, the reflectivity, mirror reflectivity through that, right? Just a little bit, and uh, then you get kind of a shiny cup there. And then, and this is uh, a real important thing to remember. Uh, I would like this this material who's picking up these opaque materials. These are opaque; they have no transparency, but they're picking up their color, uh, but I want it itself to be transparent. So I turn on transparency and uh, let's say let's keep it at Z transparency. And I change the alpha value here down to pretty, you know, transparent. And you can see that here, but here nothing happens. I render it and it's just as opaque as always, but that's because I forgot to connect the alpha uh, value to to the output. So if we now render it, then you get this really slow render time. And because you have a reflective and uh, transparent material, it's going to take you some some oomph to do that. So, and then uh, you might have to also increase the the depth of your your transparency. Uh, no, 
Yeah, that's only with the ray trace that that happens. You can, you might have to. So now we have the Z transparency. We turn on the ray trace, and uh, then you see here you, you get this this opaque effect. It just doesn't didn't really or it doesn't look very transparent. So we'll just increase that to let's say four, and then. get it much more you know get it looking transparent on all surfaces there you go so that way you can you know you can control the transparency through this material you control the colors to these through these and they can be more complex so I think that that's it for this uh, topic um, I hope this was helpful in kind of just get you started on node materials and there's you know uh, just an infinite number of combinations that you can make you'll figure it out that's a lot of um, you know trial and error it takes a lot of time to work with materials but um, this is a good start and also yeah before we actually end I would like to give this one the fourth cup and material two and I'll just uh, uh, call it yellow so and we'll make it yellow like that and use nodes on it and uh, like there again get a good repetition here and we can render that so that's now a, a yellow opaque material And then if I would like to you know, have that transparent, I can do that too. And I can add uh, input material and use what here that I was using to control the transparency. And I can take the alpha value from it and uh, route that right in here, like that. So now this is an opaque material, but I'm using another material to control its alpha value. And I turned on transparency. And of course, render times with transparency and, and so forth are much longer. But as you can see, you can use one material or one setting to control another setting. So that's uh, one of the features. Okay, I hope this was helpful and I thank you for viewing and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.